We all come from different backgrounds with different cultures. And with every culture comes different traditions and rules. When it comes to schools, there are some rules we expect to be the same or normal. But you can't say the same about Japan. This country has school rules that are totally different from the norm. Come with us as we show you 20 Japanese school rules you won't believe actually exist. Number 20. White undergarments are a must. Just imagine going on the streets and everyone already knows the color of your underwear. Sounds impossible? You should thank your stars that you didn't go to school in Japan. High schools in Japan made sure every student wear white undergarment, and this is not even a joke. And for real, it is not funny. Although we can't say every school, when 138 out of 238 that were examined have the rule, what do you say about that? This rule is so strict that teachers would pull at female students' bra straps and watch teenagers undress in the changing room to make sure they were complying with uniform rules. And if they mistakenly wear the wrong color, they must remove it right there at school. You would agree this is a complete infringement of human rights that must be stopped. Why was the rule made in the first place, you ask? Who cares? It is just right that the rule be abolished, and thankfully, Japanese students said good riddance to a weird rule a few years ago. Number 19. Every student is a cleaner. People who have been to Japan came back with similar reviews, and one of them is that Japan is a pretty clean country. And in fact, Japan is one of the cleanest countries in the world, ranking 25th in the world's cleanest countries. You just cannot expect anything less from citizens of such a country, and students are not exempted. Unlike schools in the West, where janitors are hired to clean up after students, Japanese students clean the school themselves. In Japan, kids start cleaning their classrooms in first grade, and no, it doesn't stop. They keep doing it until they graduate high school. They spend about 15 minutes at the end of the day cleaning their classrooms. For younger kids, they sometimes do it before recess, so they can play after they do the work. To you, it may seem like a wild concept, but there's a good reason for that. It keeps the school clean and also teaches kids the responsibility of cleaning up after themselves, a habit that follows them into their life. Number 18, ponytail is prohibited. This rule is not really something unexpected and it shouldn't have been on this list, but the reason for this rule, it can't just be overlooked. At the thought of what a ponytail looks like, you must be wondering why anyone would be against a beautiful and decent hairstyle like ponytail. But to the Japanese schools, beautiful? Yes. But decent? Hell no. They have banned their female students from wearing their hair in ponytails, all because they think it would open the doors of immoralities between students of opposite genders. To be specific, they believe that the hairstyle exposes the nape of their necks and it in turn sexually excites male students. That's strange. Have you heard anything like that before? Number 17, no cell phones. Okay, we can all agree that cell phones are distractions, but at the same time, they are deeply entrenched in our postmodern lives. And as you can see, they are not going away anytime soon, or are they? Let's be honest, they're not. So we just have to find a way to deal with them. If you know anything about the Japanese generally, they like their students focused and something like a cell phone won't just sit well with them. In 2009, Japan banned cell phones in elementary and high schools, but now they have rethought this rule. They had a rethink because of an earthquake that struck Osaka City in 2018. The authorities thought the usage of cell phones would have helped the students and society in a way. Of course, the advantages of a cell phone are more than its disadvantages. Don't you agree? Number 16. Separate indoor and outdoor shoes. In some countries, all you have to do when you get to school is settle in your classroom and get ready for your lessons. But in Japan, you have to remove your shoes first and then change to an indoor shoe. Generally, Japanese culture mandates that people should remove their shoes when entering homes or other buildings. Therefore, in almost every school, it is part of the rules to remove their shoes and change into a different one in the school, and in some schools, they use the uwabaki. The uwabaki is a light, flexible shoe that is easy to slip on and off, designed for indoor use only. It might sound weird to you, but these students must have been used to it because this is what they do anywhere they visit. It is just their normal way of life.
Okay, it's no one's concern. Number 15. Mandatory Swimming Lessons We often see people with aquaphobia, the fear of water, but I doubt there's anyone with that phobia in Japan. The country has made it mandatory for students to learn how to swim, and it starts right from the juniors. By the time children become seniors, they are already so used to it that they do it with all pleasure. This is a good one, actually, as swimming has a lot of benefits. It helps to keep your heart rate up and takes stress off your body. It also helps to build strength, endurance, and also maintains fitness. Apart from these benefits, if there's any reason to save a person from drowning, these students can easily come to the rescue. Let's just say this is a life-saving rule. Number 14. Uniforms are mandatory. In some countries, you don't have to wear a uniform to take your lessons, but Japan begs to differ. School uniforms are mandatory in both public and private schools, and this is the reason. They serve as a sign of equality, which means no matter what your parents' status is, once you are in the school uniform, you are equal with every student. The uniform also serves as a sign of discipline for students. Students are expected to wear their uniform at all times, and failure to do that can result in disciplinary action. The uniform could consist of a white shirt with a sailor collar and a pleated skirt or shorts. The color of the uniform varies depending on the school. The most common colors are navy blue and white. The emphasis at this young age is simplicity and practicality. The material also makes the uniform easy to wear. It can be easily dried so there's no excuse for any of the students to come to school wearing something different. After this, any student wearing something different from the school uniform should be ready to bear the punishment. Number 13. No food from home. Parents often believe in packing their kids' lunch, and that's because kids need good food to grow and stay healthy. But Japanese schools believe that they can do it better. In primary and junior high schools in Japan, children are not allowed to bring their lunch from home. Students eat the same school lunch, and the lunch is sure to make your mouth water. The lunch is usually made following a menu planned by nutritionists. Lunch is considered not only a time to feed students, but also an opportunity to educate them about food and nutrition, which is why lunch is not called lunch but shikoku, meaning food and nutrition education. Since parents are not allowed to give their children lunch from home, you'd expect the lunch to be free, right? No, it isn't. However, the cost is highly subsidized, as the lunch costs about $2.50. The best news is parents do not have to worry about what their children eat, as every meal is prepared with fresh organic foods not processed or frozen. The meal contains about 600 and 700 calories, and they contain carbohydrates, meat, or fish and veggies. Each year, the Japanese government studies nutrition and eating patterns throughout the country and uses that information to help determine how the menus are created. In case you think there's nothing special about this rule because you ate school lunch as a student too, you probably ate yours in the cafeteria. Well, this one is different. Lunch is usually served and eaten in the classroom rather than in a cafeteria. Typically, students serve each other, and as you must have known, there's no room for dirt, so they clean up after themselves. Don't be surprised no one is protesting. The food is so good that parents call from time to time to ask if they can get the recipes. Hmm, ain't you just hungry? Number 12. Students can't fail a grade. This is totally different from what you have experienced back in school. What is common in schools, generally, is that when students don't do well, they get an extra year, and in some places they attend summer school to make up for their failing grade. But in Japan, things are different. Students advance to the next year automatically, and it doesn't even matter how well they did in tests or exams. You must be questioning why you didn't study in Japan right now. Easy peasy, isn't it? But don't get too excited. Test scores are very important when trying to get into a college or high school. This means every student must sit tight for good grades if they wish to advance to the next level. And apart from that, societal and parental pressure won't even allow students to slack, which is why failing a grade is very uncommon. Number 11. Punctuality is very important. Story time. Back in 2018, a Japanese train departed 25 seconds earlier than scheduled. In other places, that's just such a fortunate event. But you won't believe what happened next. 
The act was described as truly inexcusable by the representative of the railway company concerned. Everyone involved had to apologize, and even staff were trained, so such would never repeat itself. In case you didn't know, Japanese are considered one of the most punctual people in the world. They would rather skip their meals than be late. They have a reputation for being strict when it comes to time. They value what others would think and feel if they are late because they do not want to inconvenience others, such thoughtful people. And yes, Japanese punctuality is not restricted to just trains, but is seen everywhere. From students arriving early to schools, people arriving to meetings five to ten minutes earlier, or shops and restaurants opening exactly on time. If you ever have a business with a Japanese person, make sure you get there early because they will most likely get there before the agreed time. Number 10. Haircut for boys. Who loves a two-block cut? Almost everyone. But I'd... You're a student in Japan, you just might not be allowed to have the hairstyle on. The two-block cut looks clean and tidy, and it is also said to eliminate sideburns and make the face look fresh, but the school authorities in Japan see something different entirely. They believe that the cut can cause problems, and in fact cause accidents. This theory has raised many highbrows as some parents don't understand how the cut can cause an accident. The authorities also mentioned that the rule was made to instill loyalty and maintain order in schools' strict hierarchies. If you look at this excuse of theirs, it sounds kind of watery. For a long time, Japanese schoolboys have been allowed to have a haircut, and it is even very popular with celebrities in Japan, such as actor Yusuke Isaya, Takayuki Kajitani, and others because it is fashionable as well. But it causes problems, they say, and therefore is banned in schools. Number 9. Sasmita In Aichi, a 62-year-old man once entered Ichinomiya school with a kitchen knife. There was great panic, but Sasumata came to the rescue. Also in Tokyo, when an intruder entered a school, three teachers caught the suspect with Sasumata. But what exactly is this Sasumata? Sasumata is a forked spear used by samurai in feudal Japan, also known as a man-grabber. The Sasumata, along with two other weapons called the Sukubo and Sodegarami, were used by samurai police and security forces to arrest criminals and suspects without injuring them or controlling crowds. The Sasumata looks like a two-pronged fork with a two-meter stick filled with spikes to prevent the individual from holding onto the bar. In any case, the intruder cannot reach those in use of the Sasumata. Nowadays, a modern version of the Sasumata is still occasionally used by the police as a self-defense tool. The only difference is that these modern Sasumata are often made from aluminum, without sharp blades and spikes. This weapon can be found in so many places in Japan, and of course, schools too. Many schools in Japan have kept a Sasumata to stop intruders and school break-ins because of past incidents. However, the Sasumata can only be useful if the intruder is not armed. The good thing is, it is rare to find a weapon in Japan, so it is just perfect for the place. Number 8. No romantic relationship is allowed. While it is common for students to feel attached in class, Japanese students are not allowed to express their feelings of love to anyone in their class or school. The authorities claim the rule was made to ensure that students are focused on their studies. This rule is so serious that a student must not be caught holding hands with another, and in case you're thinking about off-campus, you have to be discreet about it. A girl once caught being in a romantic relationship was made to drop out of school. Whether the students like it or not, there's nothing they can do about it because their parents are also in on it. But you know hormones will always make teens go against the rules. These students still go ahead to date each other, and that was the start of their nightmares. According to a survey, Female students are now being restricted by their boyfriends not to do so many things. It is discovered that many high school relationships involve violence, coercion, and restrictions. And in fact, 33% of female high school students said their boyfriends imposed restrictions on them. These restrictions included boyfriends demanding they not go out with other friends, limiting the times they could go out, and erasing contacts and numbers from their cell phones. Even adults don't do this much. Number 7. Cram Schools A cram school, also known as Juku, is a specialized school that helps its students to achieve a specialized school. 
To understand the reason behind the usage of cram schools, you need to know that the regular school classes and school life do not match the entrance exams. It is almost impossible to succeed in entrance exams by only attending regular school classes. The questions are said to be hard, and so most students don't pass. Also, there are too many kids in a class. Usually, there are more than 40 kids in a class, which makes concentration difficult. Some kids can study well, while others have trouble following. So the schools have no choice but to adapt the class's content to the average level. In Japan, there are two types of juku. The first one is Shingaku Juku, which is a cram school where you study to enter a difficult junior high school, high school, or university. The second type is called Hoshu Juku, or supplementary school, for kids who have trouble keeping up with the regular classes. In summary, whatever a student's problem is in class, the Juku takes care of it all. Number six, no substitute teacher. In different countries, when a teacher isn't able to make it to school to teach, Kids will end up with a substitute teacher for that class and end up hoping for an easy day. This is done to make sure that students don't stay idle during the day because of the absence of a teacher. However, not in Japan. If a teacher is absent or unable to work, there won't be a substitute teacher. The students take over the class, do their schoolwork, and study as they should without a teacher to lead them. And of course, they do it perfectly. These kids are trained to look after themselves in every aspect of their lives, and this follows them to their adult lives as they grow up to be independent. It seems we have to agree with Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who described the mind of a child as a clean slate. Whatever you write on it becomes what the child acts. These kids have been trained to do so many things themselves that you can't even tell what they can't do. But the question remains, why do they need a teacher in the first place? Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. These pictures show images of female Japanese students in their uniforms. But one thing that catches attention is the length of their skirts. You must agree that movies and animes portray skirt lengths this short, but not every school makes this short length skirt rule. In some schools, female students are allowed to wear very short skirts and they must not wear tights. Even on cold days, the students are not permitted to wear tights because it is believed that some students might wear patterns that are too attractive. Let us know what you think in the comments section. Number five, club activities are important. While club activities are optional in some schools, it is important in Japanese schools. As soon as a new school year starts, clubs begin advertising themselves. They put up posters around the school and try to recruit new members. For students who have just entered the school, the wide range of choices can be bewildering. So, a few days after the entrance ceremony, a gathering is held where the activities of various clubs are explained. In these extracurricular activities of Japanese junior and senior high schools, there are various clubs. Such activities are called Bukatsudo. Although participation is voluntary, not compulsory, most students belong to a club. Majorly, clubs are divided into two broad categories, which are sports clubs and culture clubs. And in this category are various types of activities. There are also martial arts clubs, which practice Japanese arts. As expected, many schools have kendo, judo, and kyudo clubs. And there are also schools with karate, sumo, and aikido clubs. Culture clubs often include brass bands, art, craft, chorus, theater, and pop music. While some clubs meet casually once or twice a week, some meet not only almost every day after school but also on holidays, with students going to school just to participate in the clubs to prepare for national competitions. Each club has a supervising teacher, but emphasis is placed on student independence. Such doesn't need to be enforced because watching those who participate alone looks fun and motivates others to join. Number 4. No Accessories Allowed in most countries, accessories are not considered a problem. Some of them can only make rules for moderate accessories, but in Japan, no accessory is allowed. You cannot paint nails or pierce any part of your body. Even for older people living in Japan, it is uncommon to find any type of piercing. Ear piercings are generally forbidden in Japan, in addition to any other type of jewelry or even painted nails. In Japan, ear piercings are usually done by those who are trying to appear tough or who have broken a rule. Also, a student is not permitted to wear a hat or cap. 
and they must not also have headphones or any type of earpiece during the school day. Let's just say the school authorities want their students to come in uniform, white undergarments, socks, shoes, and backpacks. Anything extra can lead to serious punishment. Number three, hair must be black. There are different colors of hair, but majorly, most people have black hair in Japan. And in case there's someone who doesn't like black hair and wants to dye it, it becomes a big problem, especially for students. The school rules say hair must be black. But what about students with natural blonde hair? The students would be asked to come with their parents, who would show the evidence that a child has natural brown hair. That is when the student can be freed. A case gained national attention in 2017 when these rules called Baraku Kosoku caused a major problem. A female student was forced to dye her natural hair black, which she did at first but eventually stopped. The officials then removed her desk from the classroom, erased her name from rosters, and checked her hair roots. The girl had to sue the school for mental distress and was eventually paid $3,100 by the local government. However, the court ruled that the school has a right to impose hair regulations. Number two, summer bummer. While other schools have their summer breaks at the end of the academic year break, Japanese schools are different. Their summer falls in the middle of the year as their academic session starts in April and not September like most schools. Summer is usually a time when families spend time together and have fun going from one place to another, but during Japanese school summer break, work goes on. Their summer break is five weeks long, which is only half of America's break. And even at that, students still go to school and participate in club activities. Even if they are at home, they dedicate their time to studying and completing assignments. Kids go to school with their teachers at this time, and it's almost as if they do not get a break all their lives. These kids have been into this for too long that they see it as the normal way of life. Normally, breaks are designed to give kids time to play, as play is needed for their cognitive development. But in Japan's case, it's always work or activities every time. However, this is not always compulsory as students are allowed to stay away from school when they have completed their assignments and club activities. At that time, parents can enjoy more time with their kids. Number one, respectful greeting. Lastly, the Japanese love respect and they do not joke with it. While walking through Tokyo in the evening, you are more than likely to spot several groups of businessmen and businesswomen bowing among themselves as they say goodbye for the night. Most times everyone bows, and you just wonder why. And if you're a foreigner, it becomes confusing because you won't be able to tell when to bow and when not to bow. Bowing is an act of respect and politeness. This is why you must show respect to everyone by bowing. In Japan, students greet their teachers by bowing, but it is done in a variety of ways, depending on the situation. For example, when entering the classroom, students line up and bow to the teacher. This shows respect and is a way of saying hello. When leaving the classroom, students again line up and bow to the teacher. This time they say, thank you for the lesson or thank you for your time. During the lesson, if the teacher asks a question, the students raise their hands to signal that they would like to answer. They must not just answer the question without getting the teacher's permission. And when greeting the teacher outside of class, for example in the hallway, students will bow and say good morning or good afternoon. When teachers are ready to exit the class, the students bow and say, thank you, otsukaresama deshita, or use the word teacher. Students are used to using that term in school, especially for part-time teachers. But when you tell a teacher or professor, Otsukaresama deshita, you may offend them. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.